This one here is dedicated for them haters I made it for my homies who ain't here They couldn't make it, let's face it The dope game done got flicky And when things get shaky, see most of you can't take it I done seen the biggest dope dealers Turn swillers and yesterday's killers The day's bust Testifying to behalf of the court They made him the key witness And they won't involve me with him Maurice Samuel Young, aka Trick Daddy Dollars, or simply Trick Daddy, born September 27, 1974. As we introduce a lot of new rap artists from all over the world to the game, we can't help but hear about and reflect on the ones that came before them that have reached legendary status at this point. For most of us, we grew up alongside and some watched them on the big screen as kids growing up, influenced by their art whether it was ideal for mainstream or not. You hear all the regular names like Tupac, Nas, Jay-Z, Big E, Scarface, and all the crews that made an impact like N.W.A., Public Enemy, Wu-Tang, Bone Thugs, and whoever else. But for some reason, when they talk about the legends of the 90s and 2000s, a name rarely mentioned is Trick Daddy. Not only his music, but what he meant to that era of down south artists getting a chance to be seen and heard. Also, what he meant to Miami and rap culture as a whole, good or bad. Trick Daddy is no question a legend in rap just off authenticity alone, as what you saw was what you got from him 100% of the time. He didn't live for the cameras, then once they weren't around became a different person. And many rap fans took to that realness and it gained their attention and started to blow up. Whether what he was saying was right or wrong, too blunt for your ear, no filtered words to ease his opinion on you, and as broken English and country as it could be, you knew it came from an honest place and had to be heard on a mass level. His personality was sharp and charismatic, but true to a fault, add to that his music when it came to relating to his environment was like watching a painting of where he's from and what you have to go through to survive if you were brought up in a lifestyle like his. Still to this day when I think about Miami rap music, Miami hip hop and Miami culture other than Uncle Luke, Trick Daddy is what comes to mind. Miami in itself as a rap community and hub never gets the recognition it deserves even in the days Trick Daddy was carrying the torch with the city on his back. Uncle Luke had his own lane but to me Trick opened the door for the world to see 305 Miami Dade County music and didn't hold back on anything from the audience. You got to see everything from the good he was doing in the community, the artists he put on, and the road he paved for all Florida artists to come behind and be themselves in an industry that more and more wants them to be something different, something with an agenda behind it, or something already done before that proved to work time and again that they can resell to the people. His last album came out in 2009, and since then, it's been like Trick Daddy is a forgotten name among music legends. Why is that? Let's talk about it. It's your boy JC Stunner Growth Music. Let's get it. Take a minute to like, subscribe, and comment on who I should do next. Trick Daddy was a rapper from Miami, Florida, born to a player father and player mother, as he says, that had 11 kids by 11 different men. He grew up in Liberty City's Pork and Bean projects before his father took he and his brother to live with him, where he began to really be influenced by the street life, selling crack cocaine, and anything else he could get his hands on by his mid-teens. By his early 20s, he was in and out of jail, one sentence for an attempted murder at 20 years old. While incarcerated, his brother Hollywood was killed, which made him realize he needed to do something with his life when he got out. He wrote over 200 songs and when he was released, he started to participate in rap battles across the city, winning the majority of them before Uncle Lou caught wind of him and placed him on his song Scarred that became a hit. He was then signed to Slip and Slide Records, releasing his debut album in 97. His second album is what led to a major deal with Atlantic Records that went gold behind the hit single Nan. Trick was in the game and followed with three gold albums and one platinum album his next four that many seem to have forgotten. Stun number one, Time Capsule Artist. Trick Daddy and his music are the perfect examples of an artist that was great for the time he was in but couldn't be a worse fit for any other. From the music to the things he said and the way his mind works wouldn't fly much in a different era. 
not to mention his sound. The South in the late 90s, early 2000s were having one of their golden eras after OutKast let the world know they had something to say. In those days, the South's influence was heavy on the game as hip-hop fans began to become aware that there were other great artists outside the East Coast boom bap sound or the drug dealer's dream lyrics equipped with a thousand punchlines and metaphors delivered perfectly with hard-hitting or exquisite beats behind it that bragged about having the most skills on the mic and fantasy stories about being the next Scarface. The South weren't initially loved in Trick's era for their bars or how well they rapped. In fact, it was the exact opposite that presented a new side fans could enjoy that wasn't perfectly wrapped with a bow on top. It was grimy, abrasive, and didn't care to be proper. But it did slap, it did make noise, it was catchy, and it was fresh, as in no one else was attempting it, nor could make it feel as real as the South did. But you watch a Trick Daddy interview from back then or listen to his lyrics from his biggest songs that played on the radio and TV, and it's hard to vision him saying those things in any other era. Whether it be one that wasn't ready for it like the early 90s or now where everyone has an opinion and some sort of influence that could cancel you altogether if they don't agree with your perspective. When social media hit mid to late 2000s, a lot of entertainment had to be cleaned up and artists like Trick Daddy weren't great representatives of change and it made his music fall behind as far as praise and recognition. One of Trick's real to a fault elements was he couldn't adjust for anyone or any time in personality or his music and that capsulated him in an era long gone. Stun number 2 Short Music Run In my opinion Trick Daddy had too short of a run on the top in rap and that caused him to be easily forgotten. His first gold album was in 98 and last in 2004 with only Thugs R Us going platinum. Artists of his era that are usually mentioned as greats and remembered as legends all had either a long shelf life on top of the game or they died shockingly right as they were peaking in music creating a story of legend within itself and now are remembered for who they were at their peak when they left without the chance to see their careers take any turn for better or worse. When Biggie died with just one album, which was and is a hip hop classic, he left before you could see him present to do it again or fail trying. Tupac the same way. If 50 Cent died right after Get Rich or Die Trying, as big as he was in 03 and 04, he would also be considered one of the greatest artists ever in rap, but we got to see his career play out more and the hype die down soon after, even though he still had a great run. Those are the rare cases, but usually legends are talked about more when they've been on top longer or has played the game of the music industry with more success and Trick Daddy's music isn't competitive when it comes to longevity and replay value. Stun number 3 Didn't Age Well with that said, there's no question that Trick Daddy's music is legendary and great representation of Florida in the late 90s and 2000s, but him as an artist or representation of hip hop didn't make the transition to the newer eras like other artists from his time. Artists that have become ambassadors for their era and spokespeople for new agendas and products with influence on a newer generation even down to some of the statements he makes in his older years leave a different taste in your mouth so to speak, no pun intended, but I still remember the backlash he got from his whole eat a booty gang campaign that while it was humorous and also real, it's not great representation of growth that you would want to be the face of what's going on now. Not being great representation is why I don't think he's honored as much as an artist from the past where instead of being talked about for all the good he's done, He's clowned for his opinions and his past music when you break down his subject matters that range from homophobia to domestic abuse and prostitution. Back then it was about the sound and the energy it gave you at the parties or driving by, but now that everything is scrutinized and broken down, his music is usually overlooked for being too raw and honest. All in all, when it's all said and done, Trick Daddy will get his day in the sun where he's honored like the legend he is for Miami and Southern music, not to mention the artists he broke and gave opportunity as well. For him and his other endeavors, that seems fine, 
as a personality in music they don't usually make him like him anymore for good or bad but for these reasons he isn't mentioned enough salute much respect it's your boy jc stunner growth music and i'm out